The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. At that time, Jesus withdrew to the region of Tyre and Sidon, and behold, a Canaanite woman of that district came and called out, Have pity on me, Lord, son of David. My daughter is tormented by a demon. But Jesus did not say a word in answer to her. Jesus' disciples came and asked him, Send her away, for she keeps calling out after us. He said in reply, I was sent only to the lost sheep of the house of Israel. But the woman came and did Jesus homage, saying, Lord, help me. He said in reply, It is not right to take the food of the children and throw it to the dogs. She said, Please, Lord, for even the dogs eat the scraps that fall from the table of their masters. Then Jesus said to her in reply, O woman, great is your faith. Let it be done for you as you wish. And the woman's daughter was healed from that hour. The Gospel of the Lord. In the Gospel today, we hear of Jesus once again going out of his way to help those who need it most. Have pity on me, Lord, son of David. My daughter is tormented by a demon. And then later Jesus' disciples came and asked him, and they said, send her away. But he said in reply, I was sent only to the lost sheep of the house of Israel. It's a profound statement by our Lord today. And notice something. Notice that Jesus does not agree with his disciples when they say, send her away. Rather, he does the opposite. He calls to her to, that, in fact, that he will help her. The disciples want him to ignore and send away this person. I'm sure they were thinking something of how Jesus, who had just a few days prior fed the 5,000 people with just a few loaves of bread and a few fish, uh, why would he spend his time helping just one person? But that's exactly what he came to do to the lost, to the marginalized, to the forgotten, those no one else would give a second thought. The Lord continually challenges us as well to change our way of thinking, to grow closer to the Lord. We can do that by gaining in virtue, faith, hope, charity, prudence, justice, fortitude, and temperance. Those are the seven primary virtues Seven, a significant number, we know. Seven sacraments. Uh, and seven appears many times in Scripture. But again, so th through those virtues, and acting with virtue is like acquiring a good habit. It takes time, practice, and patience. We learn to reject evil and pursue the good by acting virtuously, by being prudent, acting with justice, being strong in the face of temptation and acting with temperance and not taking more than we need. There also lies another message for us in this passage from Scripture as well. The demon tormented the woman's daughter. But note something here. Note the wisdom of the woman going straight to the Lord for help for her daughter not to what was common in those days, uh, the charlatans who would claim, well, if you, you take this potion or do this, this act, and uh, promise a cure, but of course there was none except going straight to the Lord for these spiritual things. And of course, it, it was a demon who tormented the woman's daughter. So we see this evil and how Jesus is strong in the face of evil as well. And through that original act of disobedience, the devil, who himself used to be an angel, took with him about one-third of the angels, and they fell from heaven because the devil did not want to serve God, and neither did those rebellious angels, as they are called. The other two-thirds of the angels, however, remained faithful to God, and included in them, of course, as we know, St. Michael the Archangel, who we have that, that prayer, whom we can call on for help against demons as well. And those good angels and the Lord, and they want to help us. They want to help us 
as well in our own spiritual battles. And there are many ways that the devil tempts us through the darkness, the corruptness, and the negativity. I also, I see on many TV shows and movies, there's now an infatuation with vampires and weird stuff like that. Well, we need to replace that with, in our own lives too, with what is positive, good, true, and beautiful, as well as embracing those virtues so that we can achieve greater holiness and righteousness and be good examples ourselves. And in St. Paul's letter to the Romans today, we heard, by the virtue of mercy shown to you, they too may now receive mercy, for God delivered all to disobedience, that he might have mercy upon all. So that while the demons have made their choice permanently not to serve God, God gives us many chances to renew our own commitment to serve the Lord and serve him who is all good. And although we are challenged in life and sometimes make mistakes, pursue things that do not bring us true happiness, God has a way of allowing us to learn from those mistakes and learn from those dead ends in our lives that he is always there for us, always there, and we can always renew that commitment to serve our Lord. Just to illustrate, and speaking of service, how many times have you been in a restaurant, a hotel, or hired someone uh, to do something, and they went above and beyond to make sure they did a good job and that you were happy with the work. They went that extra mile, and we appreciate that. It takes extra effort, but it shows how much they care. So, my dear friends, when it comes to the things of the Lord, I think we should let our own service exceed expectations. <laughs>